Hello, it's Saturday the 19th of March. You're tuned in to our 6pm newscast coming to you from Adidang's News Centre in Seoul. It's very good to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. The countdown to next month's general election is our starting point this evening, and the ruling Serenity Party has announced its finalised list of candidates for the April 13th election. Some are mainstream loyalists of President Park and Hay, but the elimination of core loyalists Kim Jae-won has surprised many. The final announcement came after the process restarted following three days of inaction. The process had been paralyzed as the party's chairman, Kim Moo-sung, and a number of others boycotted Thursday's Supreme Council meeting in protest after the nomination committee controlled by Park loyalists refused to reconsider the decision to deny candidacies to key opponents of Park. The party has still not announced the nomination of political heavyweight Yoo Sung Min, who had clashed with President Park after the former floor leader of the ruling party criticized the Park administration's promise to expand social welfare without raising taxes. A senior official from South Korea's foreign ministry says China has expressed openness to holding multilateral talks on North Korea's denuclearization that excludes Pyongyang. That includes a possible three-way meeting with Seoul and Washington. Lee ji -won has more. China is open to trilateral talks with South Korea and the United States on the denuclearization of North Korea. South Korea's representative to the six-party talks, Kim ong gyun said Saturday that his Chinese counterpart, Wu Dawei, expressed Beijing's stance during their meeting the previous day. Kim said he suggested three-way talks on implementing the U.N. sanctions targeting North Korea's nuclear and missile programs, and Wu replied by saying China would review the proposal with an open mind. Recently, China's foreign minister mentioned how Beijing is open to everything, including three-way, four-way and even five-way talks to kickstart the long-stalled six-party talks involving the two Koreas, China, the U.S., Japan and Russia. The South Korean envoy, who is also Seoul's special representative for Korean Peninsula Peace and Security Affairs, said both sides shared concerns about North Korea's recent nuclear and ballistic missile provocations. He said countries must fully implement UN sanctions to create an environment where North Korea is left with no choice but to change. Meanwhile, the UN Security Council has condemned North Korea for firing ballistic missiles into the East Sea. At an emergency meeting on Friday, the Council strongly condemned North Korea's firings on March 10th and the 18th, calling them unacceptable and a clear violation of the UN resolutions. The Council urged North Korea to comply with the resolutions and cease any further provocations. It also reiterated that all countries should redouble their efforts in implementing sanctions against the regime. Iziwon, Arirang News. Now, North Korea's main nuclear test site appears ready to support more nuclear tests. That's the assessment of North Korea monitoring website 38 North. It says satellite imagery taken earlier this month shows activity continues at the Pungeri nuclear test site in the northeast of the country. Pungeri is where North Korea conducted its fourth nuclear test on January 6th. The U.S.-based website says its experts believe the site is capable of supporting additional tests at any time. North Korean leader Kim Jong and warned this week that Pyongyang will go ahead with more nuclear bomb and ballistic missile tests in the near future to further assess its capabilities. U.S. President Barack Obama plans to nominate General Vincent Brooks, commander of U.S. Army Pacific, to secede General Curtis Scaparotti as commander of U.S. Forces Korea. Speaking during an interview with Politico, U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter said Brooks has the operational and managerial experience to handle the job. Brooks is considered... Uh, well versed in military affairs in China and on the Korean Peninsula. If confirmed, he will be the first black U.S. Forces Korea commander. Now, Scaparotti, who has headed U.S. Forces Korea since 2013, was nominated to be NATO's top military commander last week. A passenger plane with 62 people on board has crashed while trying to land in Russia's southern city of Rostov-on-Don. There were no survivors among the 55 passengers and the seven crew members. Reports say the plane coming from Dubai was circling in poor visibility for two hours before crashing. That's CCTV footage of the crash. Now, most of the passengers on board were Russian, but some reports say that three foreigners were on the passenger list 
uh, and that's still being looked into. Now, several hundred rescue workers were at the site of the crash, and the fire has been put out. A search is underway for the plane's flight recorders. French President Francois Hollande has warned that the terror network in Europe remains widespread despite the arrest of one of the main suspects in November's Paris attacks. Salah Abdeslam, who was described as Europe's most wanted man, was arrested on Friday during a raid in the Molenbeek neighborhood of Brussels. Video footage showed him being bundled into a police car after an exchange of gunfire. Abdeslam was among five suspects detained as part of that police operation. President Hollande said he expected Abdeslam to be extradited to France as quickly as possible. 130 people were killed in terror attacks on Paris on November 13th last year. Korea's largest automaker, Hyundai Motor, has scored highly in customer satisfaction at U.S. dealer service. Now, in their annual benchmark study, J.D. Power & Associates said Hyundai Motor scored 814 on a 1,000-point scale, and that means the Korean automaker ranked fifth highest. Mini was the highest-ranked mass-market brand. Buick, GMC and Chevrolet were second, third and fourth, respectively. Now, virtual reality, one of the big themes at this year's Mobile World Congress, is expanding its presence in healthcare. Uh, Korean researchers found that virtual reality based exercises combined with standard therapy sessions resulted in a more effective rehabilitation progress. Park Se Young has the details. A patient flips a fish on the screen without touching the computer. The device he's wearing is a smart glove that uses motion-based games to help patients with forearm paralysis make faster recoveries. The games simulate daily activities such as turning pages or picking up objects, and the glove-shaped sensor tracks the patient's movement. The exercises are fun, so I'm more likely to do them, which will help me recover. The smart glove system collects data on the wearer's motions and posture and measures the range of finger movement. The information is sent to a software app that then manipulates the device or puts up different objects in the training games. The system's artificial intelligence also adjusts the difficulty level according to the patient's performance to create a sense of achievement. Stroke survivors who played the virtual reality games in addition to their regular four-week rehabilitation program made significant progress in several standard tests, while those in a control group saw no major changes. Our goal is to improve the patient's function and quality of life. The Smart Glove group also scored higher on the quality of life scale, which shows it can be used as a tool for a comprehensive therapy. Virtual reality-based treatments are easily accessible and can be used by patients at home. The researchers also plan to integrate virtual reality-based treatments into physical therapy sessions. Park Se-young, Arirang News. Now, the transition from winter to spring brings many things, cherry blossoms, sunnier days and shorter sleeves. But the change in temperature messes up our immune system, leaving us much more prone to catching a cold. Kim il reports. As the seasons begin to change in Korea, people are becoming more susceptible to colds because of the wide swing in temperatures between day and night. According to the National Health Insurance Corporation's analysis on patients who suffered from acute respiratory infections or colds from 2010 to 2014, the number of infected patients peaked between March and April every year. There were more than 4.5 million cold patients in March on average over the past five years, up more than 300,000 compared to January, the coldest month in Korea. Data also showed that children under 10 years old were most vulnerable to cold viruses. This is because children under 10 are still acquiring immunity towards various kinds of infections. After this stage, their level of resistance against such viruses will rise, making them less susceptible. The common cold is usually caused by viruses entering a person's respiratory system. The best ways to protect yourself from the cold virus is to wash your hands often, avoid crowded areas and maintain constant body temperature. Kim Mogan, Arirang News. 
Now finally taking a look at the weather, spring has well and truly arrived with the mercury hitting up to 20 degrees Celsius in some parts of the country this afternoon. Don't be feel fooled by the warm weather though, once the sun sets it will start to feel chilly with the overnight low in Seoul dipping to 2 degrees Celsius. Sunday will be similar to today with plenty of sunshine nationwide and highs in the upper teens. With that let's take a look at the weather around the world. Well, that's all we have for now. Do enjoy the rest of your Saturday wherever you're watching us and stay tuned to Adilang TV. We'll be back again with our next newscast at 10pm. Create time. Till then, goodbye.